So it's been scientifically proven that tritium is a cancer-causing agent. But if you go to the EPA site, which I've done, and it, it has a little thing that says effect on humans, the first line is um, exposure to tr tritium can cause an increase in, in cancer. And it's not only cancer, as, as I mentioned with the DNA, there's also the, the risk of genetic damage from tritium. And um, there's also the risk of birth defects. Will you be going into the um, relative levels of, um, um, say, uh, i.e. natural cause treatment versus higher levels that can be dangerous? Right. And you said that from 6 to 24, I can't remember the measurement that you can People use. People are curious for years. Um, <coughs> presumably, <coughs> since they occur naturally, we can live with that. What, at what level does it become dangerous? There's a lot of controversy about this issue. At the current time, the Environmental Protection Agency has a limit under the Safe Drinking Water Act of 20,000 picocuries per liter. And as I mentioned, the test well near the river is, has been in exceedance of that level. But the controversy is, is revealed when, um, when you look at figures that will come up later in the show, people like Dr. Arjun Makajani, um, who points to the state of California, which has a goal for trillion drinking water of only 400 picocuries per liter. So that is a 50-fold improvement, strengthening of the EPA standard. The state of Colorado has a goal of 500 picocuries per liter. That's a 40-fold strengthening. Uh, the Ontario province in Canada, its uh, advisory board on drinking water is calling for a 450 picocurie per liter um, standard. And another figure who will come up is Dr. Rosalie Bertel uh, of Canada, who is calling, from a public health perspective, the regulation really should be zero release of tritium into the environment. And the disconnect is that the philosophy of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, unfortunately, which just in December, December, early December 2009, declared that they saw no nexus between health and safety and these tritium leaks into groundwater across the country including at Vermont Yankee, although the news had not broken yet. We, we cannot understand that, that position because the National Academy of Science, for decades now, it, it in 2006 released its seventh iteration of the Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation Report. And consistently, the NAS has found um, that there is no safe exposure to radioactivity. There's no threshold of exposure to radioactivity below which there's no health risk. So it means even at the lowest doses, there is a health risk. And uh, at the lowest, th there is some evidence that there's a supra-linear relationship at low doses, that per unit dose, low levels of ionizing radiation, including tritium, are having an enhanced impact larger than the dose. So this has been established for a long time at the National Academy of Sciences. So the NRC position seems to contradict this long established situation. Okay, so I can enhance it. Great. So, okay, I'll just um, pick up that once tritium is released, because it's identical to hydrogen, it can rapidly exchange with hydrogen in the biosphere, including in human bodies, opening up a number of internal radiation exposure pathways. Predominantly, these are in inhalation of uh, tritium gas and tritiated water vapor, ingestion through food and water, of tritium contaminated food and water, and even the absorption of tritium through human skin. And as I mentioned, uh, the human body is made up of 70% water, H2O. In tritium's case, the chemical formula is HTO, the T refers to tritium. And about 80% of the atoms that make up the human body are hydrogen. And chronic exposure to tritium can replace <coughs> hydrogen with tritium. So hydrogen and tritium can go to the human DNA molecule. Another feature of tritium is that it forms strong bonds with carbon to form what is known as organically bonded tritium. And this is what would take place with food such as fish from the Connecticut River or foods that are grown from Connecticut River irrigation water. These uh, plants and animals can, can take into their system tritium. It will become organically bonded. And this carries an enhanced harmful impact on human health. Can you say what those pictures there represent? 
These are um, electron photographs and also um, artist renditions of the human DNA molecule, the double helix. And this is the basis of human heredity and genetics. So we did mention cancer. Cancer can be initiated when radioactivity um, alters a human cell and it goes berserk, it goes out of control and reproduces. Another um, impact of radioactivity is genetic damage. And that's where the DNA molecules themselves are damaged by radioactivity. Okay, so I'll try to speed up a little bit. So I mentioned there's this controversy between different um, states and federal agencies over what the uh, <coughs> uh, permissible level of treating and drinking water should be. And uh, another another radionuclide that's been identified in the groundwater <coughs> is cobalt-60, which um, I wanted to put this slide up. It shows that um, as opposed to tritium, which can go throughout the human system into all tissues, different radioactive isotopes will um, seek certain organs. So in the case of cobalt-60, it's hard to see from here, but uh, women's ovaries are, are targeted by cobalt-60 as is the human liver. That's where I will concentrate. And I mentioned Rosalie Bertel, who uh, just as one example of her international reputation was the winner of the 1986 White Livelihood Award, which is the Alternative Nobel Peace Prize. And what I'll add about her work on Tritium's health impacts is that she's done a careful analysis of the International uh, Committee on Radiological Protection's assumptions about Tritium's health impacts. And she has severe criticisms of the, the faulty assumptions that have gone into this model. The model, unfortunately, is used by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to set it's uh, tritium health standards. Uh, the EPA is also has also relied on it. And we can provide to the committees uh, a copy of Dr. Bertel's um, expert testimony to the province of Ontario. And I also wanted to mention Kay Dry, who's on the board of my organization, Beyond Nuclear. She's also a member of the American Nuclear Society. She's done a lot of research on tritium over the years. And um, she makes the important point that I mentioned earlier that the NRC permits tritium discharges into the Connecticut River from Vermont Yankee as a matter of routine operations. And those discharges as well are having an impact on people downstream. These leaks into groundwater um, are another pathway that tritium is reaching the river eventually through the groundwater. But she is as concerned about the routine releases that unfortunately are permitted. As I mentioned, Dr. Bertel, um, her argument is that from a public health perspective, the regulation for tritium releases into water needs to be zero. So even stronger than the state of California, for example. And her concluding remarks to the province of Ontario were that uh, dilution is not the solution to pollution. I wanted to uh, again mention Dr. Arjun Makajani, who for several years now has been trying to raise uh, the red flag on tritium's health impacts. And Dr. Ian Fairley has also done a report um, that was issued in Canada that we can make available to you. He's also done an analysis of the International Committee on Radiological Protection's faulty assumptions on tritium health impacts. I wanted to make the point that this uh, situation at Vermont Yankee is not unique, that there are tritium leaks occurring in the groundwater, uncontrolled and unmonitored across the country. All of the reactors on the left column mentioned in a recent Burlington Free Press article, including several energy facilities, uh, Indian Point, New York, which is not only releasing tritium, but also strontium-90 into groundwater from its waste storage pool on the bank of the Hudson River. Strontium-90 is a bone seeker so it was one of the worst culprits to escape from the Chernobyl disaster and contaminate the environment. Uh, Palisades in Michigan was not listed in the article, but it has suffered a series of tritium leaks. It is also owned and operated by Entergy Nuclear. And as my coworker Paul Gunter puts it, um, whether it's a cup full or a million gallons, perhaps every single operating reactor in the U.S. has leaked tritium at some point. 